Hello, everyone, and welcome back into or well, welcome into another episode of Fractured Not Broken, the Relationship Wellness Podcast. It is your guy, Coach Raj, and I'm excited to be here with you again. And I hope you're excited to be here with me for another episode of Fractured Not Broken, the Relationship Wellness Podcast. I'm excited to, today, guy. I'm excited, quite frankly, uh, to introduce my guest, um, to have someone, and I, I share with you when we launch the pod that we would have everyday people up to and including experts in their field. And today we have an expert in their field um, of boundaries. And uh, Mark Sachs is an executive coach, uh, does boundaries work, and I'm excited to have him here and, sh and have him share with us the work that he does, how he helps and supports his clients to include organizations. So without further ado, please help me welcome to the show, Mark Sachs. Welcome, Mark. How are you? Today? Thank you very much. It's a delight to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mark, uh, just a little bit, please uh, share a little bit about yourself and your background. Um, yeah. So I'm a leadership coach and uh, organization consultant. I've been doing that out on my own for uh, about the past 25 years. And much of my work over the last number of years has been leadership coaching. Um, what I found, and oftentimes many of the people I coach used to be technical, and now they're managing people. Yeah. As you might imagine, a whole different set of skills. And I've just been honored to be doing this work to help people. People ask me sort of, what's my coaching methodology? I say it's helping people get greater, greater awareness of what's going on and then help them take some little baby steps to try new behaviors. God, yeah. um, so that's uh, my background. Before that was in public radio, I have a very interesting background, but I just won't go into that. No, fair enough. No, totally fair. Totally fair. So. The, the technical persons that you work with, the backgrounds of organizations, how did you come to, how did they come to learn of you or how did you come to learn of them? Well, I mean, it's interesting. People ask me how I get my clients and over the past 25 years, virtually every client I've had has been people referred to me or people I reach out to. Fantastic. Uh, I don't do a, have a whole lot on social media. And it's, I mean, my work is all about the relationships and connecting. So that's how I've been finding my clients. Understood. Understood. So, Mark, that's um, that's pretty awesome that you've built a reputation that uh, persons believe in what you do. They understand it's effective and it works for them and they're willing to talk, share with others. That's that's pretty awesome. And congratulations to you for the success you've had in the space. So uh, boundaries. Talk to me about boundaries. Well, um, I mean, I just see that many people have difficulty setting boundaries. And by setting boundaries, I mean uh, setting limits. Mm -hmm. um, working on a line that, uh, that, that you have a trouble crossing. Uh, and it's essentially what's acceptable to us and what's not acceptable to us. Okay. And people ask me how I got interested in the boundary stuff many, many years ago. Can I tell this story? Please, absolutely. Yeah. So many years ago, I worked in a very large national organization and I was a manager there. And one day I walked into the general counsel's office. She was a Harvard trained lawyer, kicked her butt senior VP. And she started cursing at me. Wow. And I said to myself, Mark, you need to stand up for yourself. So I went back to my office. I calmed down. And about a day or two later, this is many years ago, I went back to her office. I said, Mary, I'm happy to talk to you, but I won't accept cursing from you. So I set a boundary with her. Then I went back to my office and I said to myself, oh, my God, am I going to get fired? Because I spoke up to the senior P VP general counsel. For the next three months we worked together, she was a transformed person. She treated me with respect because I set a boundary with her. Now, I have a sad follow-up story. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was talking to a neighbor. I mentioned this woman's name. He says, Mark, I know her. And this is 25 years later, so I was very excited to see what she's like now. He recently retired as a senior person in the federal government, and she's been the general counsel at, the, at a federal agency. So um, what I did, this is not a copyrighted term for you folks. Feel free to use it. I thought that I did a personality transplant on this woman. I'm not successful doing personality transplants yet. When I'm in, I'll, I'll be so wealthy. So I said to him, oh, well, what is she like now? Mark, she's the biggest bully I ever met. Well, I said, darn, at least it worked for the time we were together. So that's what got me into this boundary stuff. And it's very, very interesting. When I do, I do both workshops in organizations and public workshops. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very interesting because I think at least 75% of the people who show up are women. 
Okay. I think oftentimes women may have a harder time setting boundaries than men. I'm not making a judgment. I'm just being descriptive here. Understand. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. So you said a couple of things, right? I want to go back to number one, um, the initial story with the lady, the um, senior vice president, GC. Right. Um, the, the thing, the thing that I heard is you chose to honor and respect you. Absolutely. It has to happen before you can expect anyone else to honor because honor your boundary. If we don't set clear, concise boundaries for ourselves and are, and, and are willing to honor them, we certainly cannot expect anyone else to. I, I agree hundred percent. Yeah. So I, when I, when you talk about those, and that's true for even, like you said, for your workshops, primarily women show up. It's true for any individual to your, to your point. It's not gender specific. It's human right. specific. Right. right? So, no, I think, I think that's wonderful because it requires courage. It requires confidence. I mean, the work that I do is an emotional intelligence, but I actually, you know, teach on and coach around boundaries as well because they're necessary because we need to understand what they are for ourselves in order to be effective and successful. And no matter the relationship, personal, professional, not romantic. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So please tell me, tell me, tell me about your, your, your workshop. So are there certain t tips or certain things that you, information you want to leave with people to ensure they get that they can apply easy steps? Right. Yeah. Well, I, I do. Um, I, I've written a boundaries handbook that I sell. It's you know, $17. People can get in touch with me. It's not on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, the workshops, uh, uh, the, the organizations and the public ones are an hour and a half. They're by Zoom. And um, I ask people to complete an evaluation after each of the sessions. And people say all the time, uh, I have people do two breakout sessions during the hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And they say the most helpful thing was not only learning about boundaries, but it was an opportunity to talk with friends and colleagues in the session about what it's like to set a boundary. And then also in the second breakout, I asked them, given what you've learned, uh, what kind of boundary would you like to set? So that's, that's uh, yeah. And it's very, I'm a very interactive kind of person. I don't lecture at all. Excellent. So, so what do you, what are you seeing in some of your clients, uh, the, their biggest challenges with uh, setting boundaries? Well, um, these days, a lot of it is uh, time management. You know, people are working toward eight or nine o'clock at night. Mm. So they're getting up at six o'clock in the morning. So it's time management. And I always say, whenever there's dysfunction, it shows up some other place. So if somebody's working till eight or nine at night and they're not spending a lot of time with family, you know, what effect is that? Right. Um, a lot of it also could be speaking up. You know, if somebody has a, a, a difficult supervisor, you know, having the courage to speak up to that person to let the person know what's going on. And, and not only, I, one of the important things I talk to people about is not only telling people what you want, also tell them the reason why. Okay. Because sometimes I think we tell people what we want and people say, nope, that's not any good. And oftentimes we tell them the reason why. Oh, now I understand. Well, that's good. Right, right. No, you know, and so again, you know, I do the work, I do work in the emotional intelligence space, sure. in the relationship space. And so, in that regard, right, you know, one of the things I encourage folks to do and that works and supports boundaries is to first get buy-in from the person that you're, you're conversing with, right, or interacting with, to Absolutely. ask if they're even open to listening, to hearing what you want to say. Yeah. Because yeah. oftentimes we'll conflate our thought and what we want to say with their interest in wanting to hear it. And those are two separate things, right? Uh, good point. Yeah. So that buy-in, I believe, is so very necessary. And once that's obtained, then that conversation, I believe, has a chance to be successful and productive. Right. Yeah. So, so some of the examples of setting boundaries, if it's okay, is saying, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. No. Um, this is what's acceptable to me. This is how I want to do it. And I need openness and sharing in a relationship. So those are some sort of examples of setting boundaries in terms of verbally with somebody. Okay. Okay. And and so let me ask you, when when you provide this and your client's execute or implement the the tips or the techniques are you learning uh what are you learning are they are they successful are they kind of like do you see it's a lack of confidence um do they have the necessary courage to implement and execute their individual right. well I, I talk to them oftentimes uh and i'll I do role playing with them okay so i'm their boss i'm, I'm playing there of course so i'm their boss and i have them do a role play where where they talk to me as their boss and then 
we talk about what that conversation was like and like giving feedback. And it's I mean, so much as, as I said, is helping people take teeny, teeny baby steps 100%. to try new behaviors and then holding them accountable. And so if, uh, so I'll say to them, you know, you spoke up to your, I'm making this up, of course, you know, you spoke up to your boss. What, what helped you do that? What did you tell yourself that gave you the courage to do that? For sure. And um, it's, uh, uh, you know, I have two master's degrees and I'm a professional certified coach. I tell my clients, sometimes I learn as much more from them as they learn from me. Because people and organizations are complex, and I've been honored to be doing this work. Absolutely, no, that's that's wonderful. As a coach, that's true. You know, coaches need coaches, and we all we're constantly learning. That's the whole point, right? We, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, it's it's similar to, you know, it's like a tomato, right? A tomato is either ripening or it's rotten, and when it's rotten, it's no longer getting you. Yeah. Right. Ripening, you know, it's it's still yeah. still evolving. So. Yeah. yeah, we should we should strive to be as much with hu as as humans in in our lives, right. particularly professionally because it's enough to be competent and productive in the workplace but then when you have to interact with others because they're persons who don't want to do management because they'd rather work autonomously yeah. and do an individual contributor if you will and they do that and they're like okay i'm okay with that but then when you get into the management piece which some of your clients have transitioned into now you have to deal with people and the work and it's yeah. important to understand what not just the work is, but what's important to the person who's doing the work. Right. You got to right. believe that you care, but that it's, again, it's like you said at the top of the conversation, it's about relationships and with relationships. I also care about what you, the person, right. not just what you do and what you produce for the company's bottom line. Right. Yeah. yeah. And another thing I talk to people about is, uh, you know, can you think of a situation in the past where you've set a boundary where you've been successful and what have you learned from that that can help you do more in the future? Great question. Yeah. Great. And that's just some, if I can you don't mind, some uh, why some people have difficulty setting boundaries. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Please. Um, doing things for others you don't want to do. You want to avoid others. Um, you, uh, one of the reasons why you have difficulty is you feel used. Uh, you feel obligated. Um you feel self-doubt and self-guessing, second-guessing yourself, um, being confused, procrastinating. A lot of people have difficulty setting boundaries because they figure, oh, it'll get better. It'll get better. Mm -hmm. And uh, procrastinating, sometimes things just don't get better by themselves. And, you know, there's the opportunity for people to speak up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, man. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like complaining, right, about something that, that that bothers you that you don't speak up about. It does. It continues to persist because unless it's addressed, it, what else can happen? Yeah. So again, that's just a courage and confidence proposition, and um, yeah. it's good. To, it's good that, but it it's also to reinforce right yeah. the need for boundaries because if you're frustrated, if a person is frustrated in 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 at work with their leadership with their peers, then it says that a conversation would be helpful and necessary, so that the frustration can perhaps perhaps be averted or addressed and mitigated. Right. Yeah. Um, but again, it starts with the boundary work is great, but it's also about, again, being courageous enough to even have a conversation so that you can explain and share your boundary. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. It takes a, for many people, including myself, it took a lot of courage to speak up. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, and also, uh, you know, to celebrate, damn, I, uh, I was good at setting that. So I'm going to go have a glass of wine. I'm playing here. Oh, right. for sure. For sure. You know, to celebrate and also, you know, talk to colleagues and friends about, geez, I was really happy that I was able to do X, Y, and Z. Definitely. So, so let me ask you, let's go back to the, um, the SVPGC person. Sure, when sure. that, when that happened many years ago, is that when you learned you had, there was something else in you to do? And I mean, what capacity were you working and then what got, what led you to coaching, I guess, is a better question. Well, that's, that's interesting. Um, I have a very interesting background. I grew up in Baltimore. I went to University of Maryland after high school. Mm -hmm. After two and a half years, I flunked out. Okay. This was in the middle of the Vietnam War and I had to go into the military. I see. So I went into the Air Force for a number of years and came out and then realized that I really loved sociology. Okay. So that's I cool. ended up uh, going to Rutgers and got my bachelor's and first master's and then uh, 20 some years ago, I went to American University and got my organization development master's degree. And I just said, geez, I really would like to do coaching. So I went through a, a coaching program called Coach University those days, many, many years ago. 
And that's where my passion was. I don't know how it happened in my brain that I, you know, wanted to do it. But um, so that's what I did. And I've been coaching for about 25 years. Fantastic. Fantastic. No, that's, that's, that's awesome. Because again, you know, coaching, the work that we do as coaches is so, in my opinion, it's invaluable. Because I think that people, my experience has been people tend to conflate in the mental health care genre, you know, therapy, counseling, and coaching, and they're not the same. They are similarities, but they're not the same. And so um, to be clear on what it is you do and to help people understand that I want to help you move from where you are to where you say you want to go, that's going to better you, that's going to allow you to experience a better quality of life, better work-life balance, whatever the areas or issues of concern you have in your life, this is what we do as coaches to help you get there. Not what we think you should do, but help you include your own answers. Absolutely. I, I oftentimes believe people have the answers within them. 100%. And me as a coach is to help them bring those answers out. Absolutely, Mark. Absolutely. Absolutely. So before we get out of here, tell what anything else you want to, you would like us to share? Like no, to share? I just uh, would encourage people to, um, you know, if you have difficulty setting a boundary, you know, think about what it'll be like once you've been able to, to successfully do it. Also, perhaps talk to friends or colleagues, you know, you know, Jim, I'd like to uh, talk to my, you know, my colleague about X, Y, and Z, and perhaps getting some feedback from colleagues or other friends. So it's all about community. Uh, and also, you know, working with your coach, if you have a coach. Absolutely. So you believe there's value in working with coaches. Is that correct? <laughs> uh, a little, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my clients, yeah. it's very interesting. You know, I most, almost all my coaching is for each for an hour. And sometimes I may not speak for more than five or 10 minutes during that whole hour. And at the end, people will say, Mark, this has been very, very helpful. And it's an opportunity for people to talk without any judgment whatsoever and people make connections in their brain. So it's uh, it's very powerful work. Again, I'm honored to be doing this and I'm just tickled that, uh, and many, uh, um, I've coached in 23 federal agencies. Oh, wow. Um, it's hard to believe the federal government can use any coaching, obviously, because it's perfect, right? Yeah. Of course. And it's just uh, wonderful being, you know, people don't think much about the federal government. Um, it, they, you know, people in the government do very important work and I'm just honored to be working with them. Fantastic, Mark, fantastic. Well, listen, um, thank you. Thank you for well, joining. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. If you have other questions come up, feel free to get back. Absolutely. And, and how how can persons reach out to you? I'll leave it in the show notes, but how, yeah. how would you like um, to? Just uh, my, uh, my, uh, in the show notes, you could do my email and then my website. Okay. Um, do you have my website or? I do. Cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just put my email and website in there. If people want to get back and even talk informally with me, I'm happy to do that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Mark, listen, it's been a pleasure having you. Oh, good. You. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay. Hey, listen, we'll let me be in touch, okay? I know. You take care. Bye-bye.